Hello and welcome. This is our Six Seconds LinkedIn Live, where today I welcome you and my guest, Debbie Hathivasaliu. Welcome to our LinkedIn Live. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Debbie is an organizational psychologist. She is an ICF PCC and also one of our certified members uh, who has done our practitioner course and our assessor course. Debbie, is there anything else that I've missed? I noticed on LinkedIn, you have over 11,000 followers. Yes, that's true. Well, I'm quite active as well on LinkedIn because I, I really like this platform. Um, it's one, I think it's the only one that I find that it focuses on truly um, business issues or people mm -hmm. issues. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, have, I have managed to collaborate with a lot of people on LinkedIn. So yeah, I'm quite active on it. Good, good. Well, thanks for collaborating with us uh, today, Debbie. And uh, as, as mentioned in our LinkedIn Live, today's topic that I'd like to talk to you about is enhancing emotional literacy, which uh, for those who know our KCG model is in the know yourself uh, section. So uh, let's talk about it. Debbie, what do you make of this enhanced emotional literacy as a competency? Well, um, these are, this is probably one of my favorite, if I, can, if I can say that I have a favorite competency because I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I believe in all of them. But emotional intelligence, uh, emotional literacy is a competency that I find can function as a backbone. Mm -hmm. and the reason I'm saying this is because it requires a lot of uh, self-awareness and it requires mm -hmm. a lot of identifying um, because emotional literacy in, involves having some self-awareness, being able to recognize first and foremost your own emotions. And I begin mm -hmm. with the word recognize because before mm -hmm. we do anything else, we have to first be able to admit to be able to see to be able to say this is how i'm feeling even if we can't name it even even if we describe it even if it's in the area of our the map of emotions somewhere but we can somehow recognize that i'm uncomfortable and i don't mm -hmm. know what kind of feeling this is but but i can recognize mm -hmm. that that i'm uncomfortable for example and mm -hmm. then it's knowing how to and I, uh, allow me to quote manage them. And I'm putting quotes around manage because it's a word that mm -hmm. I don't like very much. And mm -hmm. the reason I don't like manage is because in my opinion, feelings are not meant to be managed. They're meant to be understood. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. you really can recognize and understand um, your emotions, then you can deal with them. Mm -hmm. You can share them, yeah. you can um, reframe them, change them, rename them, take a different yeah. path, do whatever you want with them. But yeah. it's not a manage of managing them because I think that manage has a, a different connotation in our business world. So mm -hmm. I don't want to manage an emotion, meaning I feel anger, but I'm going to hide it. I'm going to manage yeah. the emotion and put it on the side and not, not show it. That's not the point. Right. No, the point no. is to show it in a productive way, to show mm -hmm. it in a way that is for you and not against you and for the people around you and not against them. So I'm not saying manage is a wrong word, but I'm saying that sometimes it has a different connotation. Yeah, that's really, really wonderful. And I, I, I'm writing, writing notes here and I love words. I, I believe in my own work. Words have a real power. And that's where we'll get to a little bit later in terms of naming naming emotions. So I like what you said here to, to recognize. So how, how do you recognize some of your own emotions, Debbie? Well, okay. Now I think that now I'm at a different uh, degree of ability, let's say, mm -hmm. because I've had the great uh, opportunity in my life to have mm -hmm. coaches and therapists and mm -hmm. throughout mm -hmm. my life since I'm 54 years old and since the age of 24 for the past 30 years I'm in this journey of recognizing okay. emotions identifying yeah. them and yeah. and um, uh, and putting them into my life in a way right. that I can benefit from them instead yeah. of avoiding them or being afraid of them so right. um, one way is at least this is the way I was taught, and I think that this is in accordance with six seconds as well, 
um, is being able to speak about them. Yeah. So one way that I was able to begin this journey, because I, I don't believe that any of the competencies that have to do with emotional intelligence have an end to it. You don't, mm -hmm. you can't, you don't, you don't conquer you graduate. <laughs> you don't graduate from this. Exactly. Yeah. You don't conquer this. This is an yeah. ongoing journey. And I think this is the glory of this, that this is a life span. Mm. You get better at things and then something happens in your life, mm. a, a new situation that you've never faced before. And then you have to start from zero in yeah. that area. So it's yeah. never something that stops. So yeah. at the beginning of my journey, and this is something that I, have, I get better at as, as mm. the years go by, is speaking about my emotions. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. um, in many um, cultures and in, and in certain ages, like teenagers, for example, um, it's a taboo to talk about emotions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might even be a weakness to talk about emotions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's so important that we all understand mm -hmm. that speaking of our about our emotions can be nothing less than strength. Mm. Because once you speak about them, first of all, you have the opportunity to hear yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, not, I'm gonna put a little parenthesis here and I'm gonna say something that I say very often in my trainings. I speak to myself and mm. I think this is one of my biggest strengths. Mm -hmm. I talk to myself. Out and loud? Sometimes out, sometimes out loud, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because sometimes I say, I hear myself saying, for example, I'm really afraid of this, for example. And then I say it out loud. I say, I'm really afraid of, of, of doing this training, for example, or I'm really afraid yeah. of buying this house or something. Yes. And when I hear it out loud, I tell myself, hmm, why? Okay. I have a conversation with myself. Yeah. I don't always speak out loud, but I do. I do. When I'm alone in my house, I do. And yeah. sometimes... Yeah. When I'm really angry, for example, and I say it out mm -hmm. loud, yep. it, it, the, 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 the strength in my angerness diminishes. Mm. It's it kind of like I heard it. I, sp yep. I spoke it out loud. So now. Yeah. Yep. You've named it. I've named out it. Loud. Yeah. Out loud. Yep. Now, mm -hmm. I, now I can look at it. And when I can look at it, then I have power. Wow. That's great, Debbie. I heard uh, Catherine Roth, uh, our, our regional network director this week, say, name it to reframe it. And that's exactly what you've just described, that we have this moment to, and I love you, your body language when it's out here now. It's yeah. not in here. It's yeah. out here. And it's almost like you're seeing it, holding space for it. And then from there, okay, what do you want to do with it? What is it? What is it doing for you? So this, this sounds like a really nice way to enhance your emotional literacy is just to say those emotions that you're feeling, speak them out loud. Yeah, for sure yeah. it's a beginning. Um, yeah. Because, and I'm, I'm being so visual about it because some it, it could be easy to reframe and still not believe in it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. reframing means something. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean change the words. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'm not angry, I'm a little annoyed, or I'm not annoyed, mm -hmm. I'm really or whatever okay uh, good good okay. great reframe it perfect what does that yeah. mean yeah yeah how is this how is this growing inside of you what is it making mm -hmm. you do yeah how is it well, making you speak how is it making yeah. you act yeah what is yeah it, what, is it, what is it take what is it taking away from you maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. certainly the the blue chick model we talk about in six seconds, we talk about, as you just described, emotions can be more or less pleasant. Exactly. And so you can go from annoyance to frustration to anger. Absolutely. But the, I guess the point then is recognizing what's annoying, what's frustrating, and what's anger. So so often I think, you know, we talk uh, in communications about, well, how are you today? Oh, I'm good. But what does that mean? Exactly. Whereas if you say, I'm really angry, you know, that can mean something or, and as we get to know people, we know what they mean when they say I'm really angry versus I'm a bit annoyed. Mm -hmm. So it's part of literacy is to kind of, well, it's to develop words. Um, and over 30 years, Debbie, you've, you've had this experience you've mentioned. So would you say that your vocabulary has also changed and evolved as you've come to understand more about emotional intelligence? I think that that happens by default, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to justify this by saying this. You just said, you know, sometimes we ask people, most of the times, how are you? I'm good. 
um, maybe if we added to that, I'm I'm good because. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, like you know, I'm good because I, I had a good night's sleep and I woke up nice and fresh this morning. I'm mm. good because my son blew me a kiss before he left for school. Or I'm mm. good because I'm going to have a great day. I can feel it. Mm. Or I'm good because I'm grateful for the day. You know, if I put a because next to it I, and justify yeah. my emotion yeah. at that moment, yeah. Yeah. by default, I'm going to start um, developing... Mm -hmm. vocabulary you yeah. know, it, it doesn't have to be the richest vocabulary in the world and it, it's mm -hmm. not about how educated we are or not or how mm -hmm. it's about being able to justify our feeling mm -hmm. um point it on a map and and give it the glow around it you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. so the emotion is there and what's happening around there why is that emotion yeah. there what is it yeah. giving you what yeah. are you beaming to others mm -hmm. yeah because we if I make, mm. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no, you go, you go. There was gold. There was diamonds there. Go yeah. for it. So I wanted to say before. I wanted to say before that um, speaking our emotions mm -hmm. and being able to put them out there, like I was saying before, there is another step before being able to reframe. Or while we we are reframing, in my mind, there's a step mm -hmm. which is. Um, being um, being empathic towards me mm -hmm. to yourself, yeah. You know, Joshua Friedman says "mepathy," and I love that phrase. Yeah. Um, you know, offering myself some empathy or others if I'm dealing with other people's emotions, right? Because emotional literacy is just not about us; it's about mm -hmm. the emotions we put out there and what mm -hmm. we what we um, uh, uh, make other people feel as well. Yes. So empathy or mipathy is a very important skill and also step, if I might call it a step, mm -hmm. because if I recognize my emotion, but I don't acknowledge it, I don't want that emotion. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm against my emotion. You, yeah, yeah. Support it. You, know, you have no right to be angry. And if you're angry, you know, the, the passive behavior. And if you're angry, mm -hmm. people won't like you and they will, they will, um, a step away from you or you have to be a good person and always say yes to everybody because that's what a good person is etc cetera, etc cetera, yeah. then i don't allow some quote unquote negative feelings because we don't believe in positive and negative feelings yeah. Every, feelings are feelings but just to um make myself clear we you know so if i feel something mm -hmm. i find the courage to recognize it even name it yeah if I don't offer myself some empathy around that, then maybe the reframing will be something that will cover it. Mm. Yeah, so we want to give the that emotion the space just to exist. Hug it. Say it, hug it. Hug I it. feel annoyed because. So there's a great tip, yeah. um, Debbie. <clears throat> Thank you. I wanted to ask too, because you're in Greece. And uh, I live in Austria, but I'm Australian. I think you were brought up in the United States I or you've been part of your time there. Mm -hmm. So in terms of people, because in our European audience, we have a, a, a very eclectic and diverse range of, of cultures and nations. I, I want to ask you, you know, in, in speaking Greek and speaking English, um, have you developed, you know, separate vocabulary or are there great Greek words that you think, ah, we don't have that sort of similar term in English or vice versa? Has True. it been an exploration of culture in, in enhancing your emotional literacy as well? Yes, of course. There, for example, in Greek, we don't have the word assertive. Okay. For example, right? Uh -huh. um, and I'm mentioning assertive because I feel that um, to be able to face ourselves, we have to be able to develop an assertive behavior. Mm. Since, I since I mentioned the passive behavior before, where mm. you may hide your emotions in order to be good for everybody else or an aggressive behavior where you feel that it's your right to express your emotions however you wish to whomever anytime and not regard the other people's emotions so lack of empathy there mm -hmm. assertiveness is the behavior that claims to have a win-win situation or mm -hmm. wants to have a win-win situation mm -hmm. so if i if I couple this with emotional literacy, 
when I talk to myself in an assertive mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. then I am taking responsibility for my emotions. Right. And, and I'm taking responsibility for the actions that may, that may follow these emotions. Mm. Mm, that's nice because it ties then into the, the choose yourself part of the model. But exactly. you first got to recognize, as you said before, to understand, uh, to, to I, I like the word you use, yeah, understand, deal, uh, to have that self-awareness mm. in, in you in this moment. What are you feeling? I yes. know we often say that emotions are data that is for you, by you, yes. from you. You know, exactly. for us, it's 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 taking in the sensory, and then we get a lot of uh, information there. So, um, in your experience, so I see a lot of great uh, things in the chat. Thanks to all those who are who are watching along, and maybe you have some questions for Debbie. We're being supported backstage by Gwyneth, who may have time to pick a question or two before we wrap up. But Debbie, with your experience and of business leaders and working in organizations and training, um, how? How far do people have to go in terms of enhancing this emotional literacy? Or, or is there still, in 2022 now, is there still some suppression going on? And, and maybe there's an emotion that you see being suppressed more often. Yeah. When you say how far do you need to go, what do you mean? I mean, uh, you know, do, is there still a lot of work to do with the leaders you're working with to really allow them the space to open their emotions? Uh, or has leadership changed a little bit, you know, in time where more leaders are vulnerable and sharing and, and a little more open? Yeah, well, um, definitely the, uh, the needed competencies in leadership have changed. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I believe that it was always it, the necessity for a leader to have empathy or all the emotional skills that we need to have in order to acquire emotional intelligence was always as a necessity when mm -hmm. you lead other people because we have such an influence on people. Imagine a 22-year-old, it's their first job and I'm their leader. Mm -hmm. I mean, the imprint I, I leave on this person mm -hmm. is immense. So I don't think that it was, it was, it was all, it should have always been a, a top necessity. Now, mm -hmm. of course, because of COVID, um, yeah. it, it's a, it's a, you know, mostly used word. I mean, every, every article you read, all of a sudden people are talking about leadership and empathy, leadership and empathy. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. At least even now it's happening, you know? So this is a good thing, but I don't think it's a new thing. If you know what I mean, mm -hmm. it's a good thing that people are talking about it, but from talking about it to actually practicing there is a journey that, that they need to go through. So mm -hmm. I'm only hoping, um, personally in Greece, I have been teaching uh, EQ and leadership for the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't, I cannot tell you to what degree these leaders go back and practice it. I don't have this, uh, the statistics, right? But sure, I can sure. tell you that it does change the vocabulary. Mm. That I can tell you because I, yeah. I'm, fortunate enough to work with the companies that I work with long term. So for example, mm -hmm. I have companies that I've been working with 14 years or 16 years mm -hmm. or five years. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in that sense, I'm able to see these people again in a different seminar. Mm -hmm. And okay. there I can see the changing, they will tell me, for example, you know what? Um, I spoke with my, my, my uh, colleague and I was really assertive or mm -hmm. I, I tried to be empathic or I practiced active listening or stuff mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yes, I can see that vocabulary mm -hmm. changes. Mm -hmm. These articles and LinkedIn is doing a great job on this. A lot of us are in there speaking about emotions mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. important they are and how important they are to be uh, identified and shared in, in a, in a yeah. productive way. Yeah. Um, and so I think that at least there is a shift in the vocabulary. And this is mm -hmm. really important because... This is the way to rewire, if we talk a little bit about neuroscience, this mm. is the way to rewire our thinking and then make mm. your act. Mm. And thinking about it in that way with these leaders, what are, what are a couple of the advantages that come from this kind of enhanced emotional literacy within organizations? What have you observed in the time you've spent long term with clients? Um, okay, so something that I really would like to say on this is this. The more we are exposed to 
these meanings, these notions around um, being smart with your emotions. And the, the more we realize, hopefully, that to be in an emotionally intelligent person, you first of all, and always have to focus on yourself. Mm. Because it all starts and ends here. Because mm. you can only decide what you will put out there or what you will put in you. Mm. The more we recognize, the more we understand, so we can, we can translate it, we can even explain it, why it's happening, then the more we're able to identify a feeling while it's happening. And this creates a calmness, creates, we call it in Greek, a subtle strength, not the mm -hmm. one that you need to yell, not the mm -hmm. one that you need to show off, yeah. but the one that makes you feel good with yourself. And this calmness derives from the process of recognizing, identifying, naming, accepting, mm -hmm. hugging, putting in your life, etc. So I think that the benefit, the greatest benefit is to be able to sit and have a cup of coffee with yourself mm -hmm. and feel good with yourself and mm -hmm. say, you know what? I forgive you for the times that you um, use your emotions in a wrong way. That's, mm -hmm. that's the best you knew at the time. Mm -hmm. But listen, myself, let's, let's make a map of our emotions and mm -hmm. let's try to identify them. And then let's see what are we doing with these emotions and how mm -hmm. are we affecting not only ourselves, but other people as well. And I think this is the greatest benefit because this enhances better communication. This mm -hmm. creates space for love. This creates space for forgiveness, for acceptance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for active listening, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Debbie. I mean, that's so rich in what you've just said. Uh, I particularly love the idea of putting it out there and bringing it in here, taking it and a coffee with yourself. I try to do it when I can. Now, just before we finish up, because I know we said we try and finish around in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've had a couple of uh, starred comments from Gwyneth uh, okay. backstage. So, uh, Ilaria writes here, Debbie, how can we support someone blocked in talking about emotions? What kinds of techniques or practices can we share with them without pushing them? So we've talked about having mm -hmm. a coffee with yourself. Uh, I, I feel because this is a mm -hmm. nice way. But any, any other ideas? Sure. You know? um, therapeutically, I work with a couple of ideas. Um, one, I will share two with you. I have a lot of uh, little, let's say, uh, tricks that I use. Um, mm -hmm. I will share two with you that come, on, come uh, at the top of my head. One is um, talking to yourself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. So I ask, um, I ask to take a small mirror, not the one, not the big one in our bathroom, but a small one. Mm -hmm. If you don't have one, you can use your mobile and look at yourself in your mobile. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this exercise has three steps. The first step is just, just look at yourself. Okay. Don't expect anything from yourself. Just take yeah. the time. Not like you do real quickly in the bathroom when you have to shave, but just sit there and enjoy and make mm -hmm. any comments you want. You know, you mm -hmm. look, you're looking great. You're, you're mm -hmm. awesome. Oh my God. Okay. Like you told me earlier, I'm getting a little bit gray or, yes. you know, you know, whatever you see, whatever you see, and then Good. take a piece of paper and write it down. And then, okay. The two is look at yourself, but this time have a conversation with yourself mm -hmm. and ask yourself, are you being honest with yourself with your emotions? Mm. Is there something you want to tell you and only you? It could be your secret for the time. Mm -hmm. But is there something that maybe you're saying, ah, I'm okay, but you're really not? Mm. And yeah. I give them like a... 10 or 15 types of questions they can ask themselves, but of yeah. course they can do whatever yeah. they want and write yeah. it down. It's really write important it to write it down. And yeah. then, then read what you wrote mm -hmm. and then look at yourself again in the mirror and mm -hmm. try to identify what is that feeling on your face. Okay. Wow. So sort of a full circle there where we can re-identify and, and see and hear. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. And then the second, and then another exercise that we do is um, I ask them to take a kite mm -hmm. and a white kite mm -hmm. and take colors. And if they can't name their emotions, maybe mm -hmm. they can draw them mm. or put colors that represent their emotions. Or yep. if in the process, if words come up, write yep. them down. Write them down. Yeah. And make a kite with all your difficult emotions, the ones that you don't want to have anymore. Mm -hmm. And then go mm -hmm. up on a mountain and fly your kite and let it go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. So these are two hands-on ways, really, yeah. Debbie. You yeah. can yeah. you can you it's a it's a, an experience, not a thinking activity, sit down and do this. It's really a hands-on thing, colorful, creative accessing parts of you that are uh, are there well let's wrap it up debbie because i know uh, you've got training to do this afternoon and things so where can people connect with you further you're on linkedin you've got over eleven thousand uh, followers eleven and a half i think it is maybe you're shooting for 12 this year or but but are there other ways that people can connect with you definitely via six seconds yes. um Anybody can go in and I really, really encourage people to do the unlocking EQ that you talked about at the beginning because um, it's definitely exactly what it says, unlock. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. want to say here that although I have a 30-year journey of unlocking and Ilaria and Catherine and Maria know this very well, mm -hmm. um, it was a great unlocking process for me because like I said before, we are not stagnant we are ongoing so we have mm. new experiences in our lives and you might need to unlock something that you didn't even imagine existed yeah um so you can definitely find me through six seconds and linkedin and i think from there on if somebody wants to reach me uh further i we can find a way wonderful well debbie thank you so much for your time today and to those who have contributed in the chat and have watched on we hope that you found this discussion to be rich and helpful in the sense of enhancing your own emotional literacy so uh, as Debbie said you can connect with us via our page sixseconds.org where we have some events uh, we're on linkedin so please follow our page and we're also on instagram where the you, you can follow our handle there as well and through all of our channels we really want to engage with you so spend the time with us thank you again for your time today thank and, you, and uh, we will now sign off thank pleasure you. Bye -bye. thanks Debbie. bye bye everyone bye